Hi everyone. Earlier in the course, positron emission tomography, or PET, was introduced along with PET CT scanners, like the one you can see in the picture here. This particular scanner has separate PET and CT rings or gantries. However, many other modern PET CT systems encapsulate these within one gantry. So now let's discuss and take a look at what happens during a typical PET CT imaging process from the time a patient arrives at the PET centre to when the imaging process is complete. After arriving at the PET centre, the patient is usually interviewed by a clinician to discuss aspects of their medical history and the reason for the scan. Often factors like diet are important as these may influence uptake of the radiopharmaceutical in the patient's body. For instance, patients are often required to fast for a prescribed time before a PET scan, particularly when a radiopharmaceutical such as fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG, is to be used. The patient then changes out of their street clothes into a gown and removes any metal objects that may appear in the scanning field. You might remember from the earlier section on computerised tomography, or CT, that dense objects are seen on CT scans. Because this scanner uses PET combined with CT, metal objects such as jewellery may interfere with the imaging. The patient is then weighed and transferred to an injection room. The quantity of radiopharmaceutical injected into the patient is usually determined by the patient's weight. The radiopharmaceutical injection is prepared accordingly and the radiopharmaceutical is then administered intravenously by a nuclear medicine technologist, just like you can see in the video. When using FDG, the patient rests for up to one hour while the radiopharmaceutical distributes around the body. In this case, it is important that the patient remains relaxed because along with diseases like many cancers, active muscle will take up FDG, which may be detrimental to the image quality. The patient is then transferred onto the bed of the PET CT scanner. This bed is then moved into the gantry of the scanner so that the patient can be positioned correctly for the scan. The red beams of light that you see are to assist with the positioning of the patient. The technologist sets up the scan along with the imaging protocols from a workstation in the control room. A low dose CT scan, called a scout scan, is then performed to further assist with the positioning of the patient and the setup of the scanner. This scout scan is completed relatively quickly. Once the settings have been optimised, scanning begins first with a CT scan and then a PET scan. During this process, the patient is moved through the two rings or gantries of the scanner, one for CT and the other for PET. The CT component emits X-rays from one side of its gantry that pass through the patient and are detected by the CT's receiver at the opposite side. Conversely for PET, the detectors located in the gantry detect gamma rays that are emitted from the radiopharmaceutical that is distributed inside the patient. During the PET scan, the patient moves through the gantry relatively slowly at a rate of about one small bed movement every one to two minutes. So depending on what areas of the patient's body are to be scanned, for instance, whether the scan is a whole body or a head and neck scan, determines how long the patient needs to be on the scanner. So a PET CT scan may take about 20 minutes to an hour. After the scanning is complete, the technologist or nursing staff remove the cannula from the patient's arm. The patient is then allowed to get changed back into their clothes and are free to go. The images acquired during the scan are reconstructed to appear as multiple slices, as three-dimensional images and as fused images where the PET and CT image are combined to give information on function and structure within the patient. The clinician uses these images to assess disease, such as cancer, and provides a report of the findings of the PET-CT scan to assist with patient management. So now you have an understanding of the patient's experience during a PET-CT scan. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative.